Spider, Spider, hit you so quick. Let's cut this thing into steaks. We lost the side. We're gonna try and recover it. Delicious, underrated. The mocha. <laughs> when we start cooking, I promise. Our sauce is ready. We are cruising. Oh my gosh, you should have just seen what happened. They saved the day. Hello everybody, I'm Grant Crilly and welcome to another Chef Steps Live. Today, we're gonna talk about all things sous vide. And for everybody watching, uh, I bet most of you already know what sous vide is. I'm willing to bet that that's the case. Um, but I want to talk about our newest product, our newest addition to sous vide called Turbo. It's the same perfect results you always love about sous vide, but it solves that biggest complaint most of us have is, why is it so darn slow? So this is amazing results and sometimes twice as fast. It's pretty cool, okay? So we're going to talk through that. We're also going to call an amazing sous vide expert. He's actually a PhD mathematician and a food science, food safety expert, Dr. Douglas Baldwin. We're going to chat with him later. Uh, Nick's going to help me pull off a really cool stunt. This isn't like a goofy, silly stunt either. This is a really practical way to do something just awesome. It's the ultimate cut of meat and the ultimate cooking technique with the ultimate finish. And it's showy because, you know, if you're going to spend money on an amazing piece of meat, I want to make a show as well. So stay tuned to the end for that. And all through this, we have an opportunity to win our newest product, Jewel Turbo. Okay? So, and not just one. But we're going to give away five. All right, so if you're watching, scan this QR code. We'll pop it up a couple more times. Scan, 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 save it. And in, I always forget, it's like a couple days, a day or two, we're going to announce a winner. OK? Legally, we have to give it like 48 hours. I wish we could tell you right now who won, who won but we can't. A couple days. But we're going to give away five. So scan it, share it with a friend even, register. It's an amazing opportunity to get your very own Jewel Turbo for free. Check that out. Cool. So. Let's get right into it, which is, what the heck is sous vide? So for anybody watching that's saying, like, I already know what sous vide is. I've been Studio Pass customer and Chef Steps watcher for a long time. I'll try to fly through this. But if you don't know what sous vide is, I'll just try to simplify it in its most quintessential essence, which basically sous vide to me is precision cooking, or it's a water oven, or it's cooking food at the exact same temperature in the same environment. So the food and the environment are the same temperature. How it works is basically you put your food in a bag, then you put that in the water bath, and that's it. And it will never, ever, ever overcook. It's a really incredible technique that's been around for a very long time. And now, today, we're introducing Turbo, which is the coolest thing to happen to sous vide since, I don't know, sliced sous vide or whatever. So this is basically, if you take a look at the screen, how normal sous vide works. So that top flat dotted line is the desired food temperature. Then you have the temperature coming up, meeting the temperature of the food, and it holds it there. So there's something that's kind of amazing with sous vide, which is it can never, ever overcook. You can get over tender, and we'll talk about the difference between doneness and tenderness later with Dr. Douglas, too. But you can't overcook it. It's impossible to overcook it. And now with Turbo, basically there's a bunch of math and an algorithm behind the product that adds just the right amount of heat energy to speed up that entire process so it's done to perfection even faster. It's pretty freaking amazing. And here's the other cool thing about it, too, is you don't have to just all of a sudden take it out like you might when you're cooking it in a pan. So it'll cook it even faster, but it's got this thing called prime time, which it'll just hold it there still. So it's, you know, it's basically ready faster, and it stays ready even longer. It's pretty amazing. OK, so um, basically that's sous vide, and that's turbo. I'm going to show you how our new product works with some cool techniques. And I've got my live audience here, too. Thank you for coming, guys. And if you guys have questions, I want to hear from you as well. So raise your hand, scream, just throw something over here. If, I don't, if you don't get my attention, that's fine. Um, but then anybody who's online as well, just throw your questions in. We'll get to those as well. And let's get cooking, OK? So when you're cooking sous vide, just like when you're cooking anything, the first question that's the most quintessential is, what am I going to cook, right? Like, what's my cut of meat? So for Turbo, um, and we'll get into more of this later too, it works for tender cuts. So anything like steak, salmon, pork chop, chicken, and these are things that just need to get to a temperature and then they're ready, okay? Uh, I'm gonna demo beef today because after, you know, six years, seven years of Jewel sous vide being in the market, there has been hundreds of millions of cooks across the world, but steak 
is still the number one most cooked thing. Millions and millions of cooks with steaks. And I would be willing to bet only a couple of them have been overcooked. And not by Jewel, probably when you seared it in the pan. But we'll talk about that later. So first thing first, choose your cut, choose your steak. Um, and I've got a few in front of me. And we also have a resource on Chef Steps to help you choose one if you want. And not just for sous vide, but we'll help you choose a steak for any cooking technique. It's called Chef Steps Meat Cuts. It's amazing. It's the biggest catalog of every spec cut that there is in the world. Okay, And you can go there and check it out, look at it. It's pretty incredible. Um, can we show that? So anyways, I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Here's meat cuts. Thank you, guys. We had a little glitch there. No big deal. So you go to chefsteps.com slash cuts, check out the link. You get access from your studio pass member. This is every cut you can imagine, plus a bunch more. It shows you where they come from, uh, what other cuts are broken out of them. It talks about different techniques to use for them. And you can adjust the thickness, and it'll tell you what time and temperature to cook them with. Did you guys all know that Chef Steps has meat cuts? I feel like sometimes even you know our most hardcore fans haven't used it or don't know it's there. It's a really cool tool. I love it. It's amazing. And you don't just have to you know, be at home. You, you can use it at the grocery store. Like, which cut do I want to do? Am I going to pressure cook it? Am I going to braise it? Whatever. It's awesome. OK, so for me today, I've got these cuts in front of me. I've got filet. I've got New York. I've got a really amazing ribeye. And I've got a T-bone, which a T-bone is basically just a New York and a filet that had a little baby or big baby. I don't know. I think they just had a big baby. Um, but I'm going to do New York today. OK? So as I'm getting this going, I'm going to use New York because it demos the temperature scale really well, just because it's a nice, clean, single muscle. My favorite cut out of all these is the ribeye, but I'm going to do New York right now just because it's a really clean way to show the temperature. But yeah, why don't you guys tell me what your favorite cut is? We got a little poll here. We got New York, tenderloin, flank, tri-tip, tomahawk. Maybe your favorite cut's ground meat. I don't know. I don't know your life. That's fine. I like ground meat, too. But for now, I'm going to get started. Do -do 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 -do. I've got a couple little goodies here. I've got my little baggie. That's sous vide basics, right? I've got jewel running. Let's see here. I'm going to show you guys the whole new process of turbo. So I got to get connected. Do, 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 do. I think you're going to be able to see this. I can't tell yet. OK, so for me, when I'm cooking sous vide, turbo is a little different. So any sous vide, you can really just take the product, throw it in a bag, throw it in, pick your temperature. With Juul, one of the things, if you use Juul, that's amazing, it's a super visual. So you can see the results before you even begin cooking. I think a lot of folks get into sous vide and a lot of modern cooking, and they feel overwhelmed and riddled with weights and measures and all these different precision tools. But one of the beauties about Juul is it's super visualized, from guided cooked videos to, I don't know what time and temperature I want. I just know I want it to look like that, so go. Cool. Well, we got 19. New York's number one, huh? OK, fine. I wonder why. But New York, I'm going to cook New York today, too. I can't believe you guys didn't say tomahawk. But I'm going to show an amazing way to cook tomahawk later anyways. All right. So we're circling stuff. Searing. OK, here's the thing. I'm cooking sous vide. i got to sear it. Some people sear before. Sometimes people sear after. And sometimes you want to do both. So this is a whole to sear, not to sear. I'm sure the folks here wonder about this all the time? Or do you guys do both all the time? Mm -hmm. You do both before and after, huh? Because why? Why do you do both? Because it gets a better sear. Yeah. You know, and I'm, that way I don't, I, I'm less concerned about cooking, overcooking the steak. Yeah, like, Because Afterwards. I'm trying to get that brown that I really want. Yes. We've got experts here. <laughs> so check this out. Here's the thing. If you sear before, you're going to build up a bunch of flavor. That's really nice. But if you don't sear after, it's not going to be as crispy, and you're not going to have as much like temperature in it, right? If you just sear after, you're actually more likely to overcook your steak, too, because it takes longer to sear in the end. But if you do both, you get the benefits of all this flavor and all this amazingness in the beginning, and the Maillard reactions continue through the cook. And then the post sear is even faster, and you get more flavor. So you get this crunchy, delicious, sizzling hot steak with a ton of flavor. So I've got a New York. I'm just going to get started on this. I like to do a little bit of trimming on just this tough silver skin. And then I leave. I like to leave this little fat guy here usually. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum. First things first, sear it. And I'm going to do both, OK? I'm going to crank my pan up. 
I think the whole searing thing too, a lot of folks don't put enough energy into their sear. And especially folks who are beginning cooking, even if I'm just cooking a steak on a grill or in a pan and I'm not even cooking it sous vide, I think one of the important lessons is it takes a lot of heat energy to sear a piece of meat because you're basically searing a huge water battery and you need to just cook the surface. That's the goal of a sear, is just cook the surface. And the colder the pan or the colder the grill and the longer the cook, the more you're gonna overcook the inside and still have a bland, great piece of meat. And it doesn't matter if it's a vegetable or a piece of fish or chicken, you know, searing is all about getting as much heat energy as fast as possible onto the surface. So, I've got a silly hot pan over here. I've got a nice New York right here. Doink. Whoop. This is all the regular stuff you guys have seen. I'm like a pepper maniac, so I want lots of pepper. There's always a question about seasoning and salting before and after too that we're not really getting into, but basically for me, the longer I'm gonna cook a steak sous vide, the less likely I am to put salt in it. So you can actually put a ribeye in sous vide in the morning and go to work and let it hang out for 10 hours, and it's freaking amazing. But if you salt it, it'll dry it out and you know, kind of cook it gray, basically. So if I'm gonna cook something a long time, especially a tender cut, I don't add salt. Um, I'm gonna add some thyme to my bag in just a second. So here's the basics. Silly hot pan. And I'm only gonna use one pan because I'm gonna use it later as well, okay? So I'm gonna actually save the pan for later. These tongs, it's like a joke, look at this. I can't even, <laughs> someone's playing a joke on me. I'm gonna use my hands, okay? Nick. Thought he got me. But that's what hands are for. Aww. Cool. Ooh, you guys hear this? Yeah. Would you say it's still a little too cold or just hot enough or what? It needs to be hotter. Yeah. Sounds like it needs to be I think so too. You hear it popping. Yeah. See the color? See, I screw things up too. But it's fine. I just don't want to leave it in. I'm going to take it out for a second. Just let the pan like crank up. And then I'm going to go pss, pop it right back in. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's smoky. I know, it's kind of crazy. Oh, a little better sounding, there we go. This is something I like about induction burners too. I actually do this with a gas stove in France and these restaurants used to do this a lot in small kitchens, but you don't put it over the whole pan. We would put the rag like in the pan like this. And it, the, in the house it keeps this like atomized fat from getting all over the greasy counters and all that sort of stuff. And with uh, an induction, because you're never gonna burn it, you can actually just throw it over the whole thing. Is that a new one? That's it's amazing, it, it works really, really well. That's a TikTok right there, <laughs> it's good. Look, so it filters it. And if I leave this on searing, you'll actually see like, it'll start to be like this greasy ring of smoke. So mostly humidity is coming out of the towel and all the greasy fat that would normally atomize and stick on your, ca your cabinets, which is annoying, that goes away. Cool. It's getting there. Here's the thing about a pre-sear too. We're not looking to get a super, super dark sear. Just a little color, dry it out a little bit. Our cameraman loves when I throw rags over everything he's shooting. Look how amazing that shot is. Yes? Sometimes you have to push down on the steak because I find sometimes my steak curls up yes. in the center as it's touching the pan. Especially like a ribeye or something like that? Absolutely. So yeah, depending on... Um, the cut, absolutely. So I'm gonna take this off, and even this, look, instead of like throwing it in the sink, I'm just gonna like come back to this. Look at, ah, right? Save the camera lens and everything. Okay, we got a question here. Do you recommend letting the meat come to room temperature before searing? So that's a great question. Um, I do if my goal is to cook it really fast and even in a pan. Um, with sous vide, it almost doesn't matter. You can put it in cold or hot. Um, but the thing is about a room temperature steak is it will sear and cook faster, which is really good, but it's a different thing you have to manage. So if I have an ice cold steak and I sear it, it takes more energy to hurt, heat up the surface and then travel past that, which is good if I don't want to overcook it and I just want to sear it. And we're gonna show you an extreme example of that later when I 
I'll just say it now. We're going to cryo-fry a tomahawk. It's amazing. It's actually a really practical way that's showy to cook an amazing steak. It's freaking awesome. OK, so I've got my, what's up? You got a cue? Do you know what a Pittsburgh sear is? A Pittsburgh sear? Yes. I don't know. Is that like a Minneapolis muffin or something? What is that? What is it? It's a really crunchy sear. OK. I it over a butcher's table, and I don't know how to get that. Oh, oh, like when it's just like black and charred and yeah. It's like a cr crunch on it, a crust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So honestly, you can do that, but I feel like the best way to do that is with an open broil grill, which they do at butcher's table. Yeah. So if you have, it's hard to actually get in a pan because the pan holds on to moisture and steams while it's searing, which we don't like. But an open grill with a ton of radiant heat, if it's really hot, that's when you get that black char and you kind of move it around a little bit on it. It still takes a ton of heat energy. So you're talking about high temperature, but a lot of heat energy, too. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I totally. Did you do it in a pizza oven? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, why not? OK, so we're circling stuff over here. I don't know. All right, so I've got a steak. Boom, here's the part that I want to get into. So far, it's normal sous vide. I'm going to throw some of this in. I'm going to throw some of this in, blah, 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 blah. You guys have seen all this before. Whoop. This is normal sous vide so far. No big deal. Basically, you want to throw your piece of meat in a bag, maybe a couple garlics or something. Maybe you want to smash the garlic, too. It's up to you. OK, here's where the new turbo gets a little bit different. Are we ready for this? I'm going to turn on my phone. I don't know if you guys can see this. Here's turbo. Oh, yeah, so same old situation, like meaning see the results before we even begin cooking, which is I don't know what temperature, but I know I like that steak. It looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to go with this one. We added another one just now. That's why it looks a little bit different, but it's really good. So I'm going to hit Next. Check this out. So there's a little button and option now in the new hardware that says Turbo and in the new app. Basically what it is is that applying the algorithm we showed earlier, and we'll talk to Douglas more about it. So I'm going to fly through the process real quick. You can pick any steak, one steak, Next, and you measure the thickness. Turbo comes with a cute little ruler with a QR code, so you get your pass for Studio Pass too. It's awesome. But basically, you don't really need it, but it's cute. Really, I want you to scan the QR code on it. That's the secret weapon there. That's one and a quarter. Do, 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 do. You hit this, one and a quarter, next. And if you want to really make it fast and good, throw it on a scale. We'll talk about why. Douglas will talk about why he's having you do that. Boom, hit start. So there's a couple more steps now if you want it turbo. Um, but really, the weight and the measurement, you can kind of just guess it too a little bit, and you'll still be like, it's pretty quick. So that guy goes in. This part's normal. Hangs out. This goes back to it's cooking. It'll cook faster. The algorithm's thinking right now. It's going about 39 minutes. Normally, it would be an hour and 15 or something for a one and a quarter inch steak that's cold. So it's even faster. But once it's done, it'll text you, message you, whatever you want. And if you're not ready to pull it out, because you thought you were going to be ready sooner, but you're not, because the sous vide tool is now faster than you are, which is awesome, it'll hold it in prime time, make it nice and easy. It'll be there waiting for you when you're ready. So that's it. So we'll come back to this in a second, and we'll do post sear, and we'll talk about some strategies around post sear. And if you guys have questions about post sear serving, we're going to try the meat. We have some other things going in the bath. If we have time, we can, like, post sear technique, some salmon or chicken or pork chop, because you know that's where like the magic is in that finished, crispy awesomeness. So one of the things I love about all of the tools Chef Steps and Breville makes, we're trying to help people be more creative and more empowered. So we don't want to automate everything. You still got to like use some technique and learn how to cook. You know, that's the fun part. But we're just trying to take away the annoying stuff for you. So that's cooking. I feel like we should call Douglas now. Are we ready to call Douglas? Let's call Douglas. Let's ask him about turbo and how it works. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Douglas Baldwin. Hey, Grant. How you doing, brother? Excellent. Yourself? Amazing. I hope that cute kitty comes back. <laughs> Douglas's yeah, cat. cat. I didn't remember his name. Lily? What was his name? Yep. That's Lily. it. She's a little oh, darling. I hope she comes back. OK. So for anybody who doesn't know Douglas, uh, this is Dr. Douglas Baldwin. At Breville. He's got a PhD in applied mathematics from the University of Colorado Boulder and is in the sous vide hall of fame. He's worked at Chef Step since 2013. We've worked on all sorts of great content and articles and food science, and he's spent a lot of time working on the algorithm and the math. 
of Turbo, yep. which is what we want to talk about today mostly. And we've got some questions for you, Douglas. And I want to just dig into a couple key things about like why I use the ruler now and why I measure, and then how Turbo works. And also, what are the other kitty's names? Just the one. OK. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, and I have some really serious yeah. questions too, Douglas. It's something else I've been, I mean, you're the smartest guy I know in the, in the food world. So I'm, something I've been really chewing on for a while is like, I was, how many holes does a straw have? One or two? I, still, I can't figure that one out. All right, enough of that. Same as a donut. Same as a donut. And a coffee I, coffee. How many holes does a donut have? I just, uh, okay, we'll move on. All right. Okay, so why don't we start with, do we want to start with basically how Turbo really works and what it does? Sure. Let's talk about that. OK. Great. So now that we have Turbo, and we had a little chart up earlier, and it was showing like, you know, sous vide holds at a steady temperature that you want the food to be, like equilibrium energy system cooking. And now Turbo is putting a bunch more energy in the beginning. But how does it know how to do that? And how does it know how much? Because I've been cooking with Turbo now. And it's been coming out perfect, and I'm still shocked even with the prime time after, because mm -hmm. I did some really pushing the boundaries. I was like, I'm going to leave this thing in for three hours with turbo and see what happens. And it still came out perfect, which I was shocked. To give you credit, you nailed it. Thanks. So can you tell us a little bit how it's working and why I'm measuring the steak and the weight now and what Jules doing in the back end? Sure. Of course. I think a lot of people have used my tables in the past that was a way of figuring out how long it took to cook based on the thickness. Mm -hmm. So it's the same sort of mathematics, but what we're saying now is, oh, let's see how much above we can hit it because the speed of heating is related to the difference in temperature. So uh, the recipe author says, hey, I want no more than like a three degrees Celsius gradient or five degrees Celsius gradient from the uh, core to the edge. And I just like, like if you're falling right behind a semi, you don't want to get too close, but you know, you, you sort of hold on the gas, get right up close to it. And that's sort of what we're doing here. We're raising the temperature up above so that we make sure that the surface does not get overcooked. And then we cut the temperature down to your desired temperature. So the water bath temperature slides down to your user, uh, your set point right as the core comes up. And we account for carryover cooking because we all know, right, if it's too hot in a pan, you pull it out to rest, it carryover cooks, right? Yeah. I'm doing all the calculations. It's solving. You're doing them all. Uh, partial differential equations. It's doing literally millions of calculations every few minutes. That's fast math. As you're cooking it. So it takes the data from the jewel, sends it up to the cloud. Uh, I do all kinds of computations, send the exact program down to the jewel so it knows exactly what temperature to do right this moment. Oh my so, God. I mean, it's sort of like the Delta T cooking you did in fine dining restaurants. Yes. But, you know, it's keeping track of it. Like, no cook can sit there and watch the thermometer the entire time. And we don't want like thermometers anyway if we don't have to have them. Right. So no thermometer. It's keeping track continuously. You know, how, how hard can I push this so it comes out perfect? Yep. And to your point, it does it super, super fast. Douglas, did, it, did I ever tell you that I'm crazy fast at math? I know we've known each other for a long time, but I don't know if you knew that. Yep. Ask me any math question. Um, square root of two. 38. That <laughs> uh, was fast, though, fun. huh? Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I hope that every time we cook turbo, you're not like at home doing the math, right? You Luckily, no. Out, you go to outer space, comes back, lands on a server. Exactly. And it just happens. Yep. I love it. Can you just mention real quick what delta T cooking is? Because I think we try to explain oh, that a Oh, yeah, lot. no problem. And so, yeah. Uh, like if you're in a fine dining restaurant or something like that, you don't have, say, 50 different baths, right, at different temperatures, right? Maybe yeah. you have like four. So you might say, oh, I'm going to do some fish. I want the core to get to like, what are your, what's your favorite temperature for like salmon? Mm, I like I like the buttery, molten, like mm -hmm. 100 and, I don't know, eight or five. I like pretty low temperature on the inside. Yeah, but yeah. you might put in a 130 degree bath. Yep. And then you might have a thermometer in it. You might be waiting. And as soon as it hits like um, 97, you might go, oh, OK, I better take it out or it's going to get overcooked, yes. I guess, because you know, you've done a bunch of times. And that's for the Delta T cooking. You're using a higher water bath temperature. But you have to know when to take it out, or you have to stick a thermometer in it. It's a lot of extra work. Right. And, well, and if I'm on a I grill like or be, a pan, right, that's higher Delta T cooking. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
So the bigger the distance between the desired food temperature and the cooking environment. Yeah. Yeah. The faster it goes, but the easier it is to overcook. The more you have to get it right. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Cool. OK, so we were going to chat about tough cuts and tender cuts, too, because we have this oh, yeah. new thing called turbo. But you know, when folks are making ribs or a brisket or whatever, it's usually not something I need right now, instantly tonight. Mm -hmm. And this turbo thing's from, I think we've been working on this for a long time. Our goal is like, how do I help somebody get dinner tonight from scratch on the table faster, even more perfect uh, and easier? Yep. So this is all about tender cuts. So let's talk yeah, about exactly. as what you it's said, better for. Tender cuts, because I like to think of it as like fast things that change in the food and slow things that change in the food based on temperature. Slow things is like changing the connective tissue, the collagen, mm. you know, denaturing it, breaking it apart, you know, making it really tender and unctuous that way. That takes a really long time. Uh, I mean, you can speed it up with like a pressure cooker, but then it's a totally different thing than if you do a slow cooker. So those things we can't really go turbo on, but uh, your steaks, your pork chops, your chicken breasts, yeah. that's what we've released with turbo because those are the things that we can uh, Target fast temperature react, cooking. right? You just yeah. get up there, boom, ready to eat, and that's what we're doing. And amazingly, a lot of the time the texture is better. Yeah. Um, we it's a little juicier, it has different texture. Totally. We've got a quick video. I know you helped with the science behind this years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I love Let's this video. Let's just play video. it real quick. And this is the difference between tough and tender to Rick. cuts in theory. I think it's one of my favorite videos Chef's have done. It's super educational, a little entertaining. Let's run it. When you've got an animal, say a four-legged mammal, whether it's a cow, a lamb, a pig, a woolly mammoth, whatever, that animal can be divided into different cuts of meat, and those pieces of meat are going to be either tough or tender based on what that part of the animal does. Tough cuts are going to be things like the shoulder, the neck, the legs, parts of the animal that support its weight or do a lot of activity. These muscles are tough because they have a lot of collagen, which is what holds the muscles together and connects them to the bones. Collagen makes muscles tough and chewy, but it can be broken down by heat over time. So these are all cuts that you'll think of as being cooked for a long time or slow cooked. Tender cuts like steaks and chops have the least collagen and can simply be heated and seared to your desired doneness. Those are the basics of tough and tender cuts. Keep cooking and keep learning. All right, I hope we learned something about tough and tender cuts. Douglas, let's get into some Q&A, just for a second while we still awesome. have you, okay? Um, we've got a couple up here, and then anybody who's watching, this is a really amazing opportunity to ask a renowned food scientist and brilliant mathematician all sorts of food questions. If you've got something that's an itch that you've been having about cooking, it's not sous vide, that's okay, throw it up, let's hear it. So let's chat for just one minute. We've got one here, Douglas. Can you discuss the most common misconceptions or mistakes you've seen regarding sous vide cooking? I think we've seen a lot. Overcrowding of that. the bath. There you go. That's my one. Uh, if you can't to see, imagine that the water easily flows mm. around it. It's just not going to cook evenly. I yeah. mean, one of the issues I see is if someone puts it just way too close to the edge because then the water can't yeah. get around. Or if you pack them together, yeah, it's just not going to cook. I feel like so when I'm at the my house and I'm having parties, I'm trying to overcrowd the hot tub as much as possible. That's the goal there. But with yep. sous vide cooking, it's like, you know, one or two steaks at a time. Yes, in your room. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. What's the difference between doneness and tenderness? I love talking about this. We just watched mm. a video on this kind of, but like, yeah. I put a steak in, you know, sous vide, and it's 135 degrees. I'd like to hear your version of what's the difference between doneness and tenderness, maybe, as far as the Yeah, I really think a lot of the doneness, especially with the beef, is it's all about the color and sort of how it looks. And uh, that's a lot of that is with those water-soluble uh, uh, proteins, mm -hmm. like your myoglobin and those. And so, uh, you know, it starts off red at low temperatures, and you get it too warm and the surf shifts to more brown and you know, you're light scattering so that's why it goes from red to pink and those things sort of change the visual look and sort of you know we eat with our eyes as well as our mouths and mm. I think that's a lot I of the doneness the yeah where, <laughs> where texture I feel it's very much uh, can change right you can have something that's uh, heated really quick and it may look like a different doneness than you expect but the texture when you're eating it is could be very yeah. tender. Yeah. Uh, so like with the turbo, um, we found in our very extensive testing, I mean, we've hundreds and hundreds of steaks, uh, like ribeyes tend to look a little bit darker because we're heating them faster. Yeah. So they look like they're a little bit less done, even if they taste 
a little bit different than this. Yeah. It's a little more can, like a traditional And you can take like a one. beef shank that you really want to have a target temperature of 200 and get to that target temperature doneness pretty quick. But mm -hmm. if you pull it out an hour, it's going to be wicked chewy still. So it's not like exactly. yeah, yeah. tender. I love it. All right, could you explain? We talk about this a lot. I'm sure some of our folks know this, but we've got you know some new audience here. Maillard reaction and its significance in sous vide cooking. Like you sear a steak before mm -hmm. and after what happens when it's in the bath even. Yeah. So uh, what's the taste of your really fancy beef? It has all that beautiful marbling because the sort of species like this is beef is all from the fat. But the sort of roasty flavors, you know, the things we associate with a beautiful steak, a lot of those flavors are kind of from browning it. And that's the Maillard reaction. So uh, it takes two things. We need the amino acids, basically think proteins, and then we need some sort of reducing sugar. Like that's mm. why if you put butter in the pan, a little bit of that lactose, that really speeds up the browning reaction. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's natural sugars in the meat too that brown, so we don't have to add sugars to it. But those combine together and they make so many flavors. I mean, that's, you know, the crust of bread that we just love on those sourdough breads. That's a Maillard reaction. Yes. Uh, chocolate, coffee, those are Maillard reactions. Uh, caramel, all these things. I love are it. Are these Maillard reactions? This reaction between the meal and they kind of cascade and, and continue even in like an exactly. hour or so when I'm cooking sous vide, right? I sear, put it in sous vide, and they'll keep developing. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right, we've got a good question from the audience here. What are pros and cons of overestimating when measuring thickness for turbo? Oh yeah, I haven't even thought about that. Mm. So what are pros yeah. and cons uh, of overestimating thickness? So if I in put general, it in too do thick. the uh, put thicker instead of thinner. If you're under, go for the thicker. Great. Um, Air in the side. Especially important thicker. for things like chicken breast, things like that. Maybe lift it up and sort of eye it. Make sure you're not okay. you know, underestimating the thickness uh, because the more accurate it, you measure the faster it can mm. be and the more accurate That's an interesting note I haven't thought about. So if, if you have a chicken breast down and you're like pat it or press it and you measure it, then you put it mm -hmm. in the bath and it becomes neutrally buoyant, it kind of gets thicker, right? A little yeah, bit. Yeah, we account so. for that. Okay. That's, uh, that's why it took so much testing <laughs> to get it can just right because we found, oh yeah, in general, as it cooks, it squeezes a little bit and breast, increases so the thickness by about 15%. Yeah. On average, so we account for it. Oh God! Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, there's a guy down in Sydney, Brendan. Oh, he cooks so Whoa. many chicken breasts with all these little porky prime probes in it to make sure it comes out perfect every time. Mm. And Otto has done tons of stuff. Razorhead too. chicken you, breasts. You know Otto. He's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Um, Douglas, we are going to get into executing all the awesomeness of Turbo because we're going to pull the steak out <laughs> and sear it. And I hope you stick around. We're going to yeah, pull off you. an amazing ultimate basically an ultimate steak with the ultimate technique and the ultimate sear, our tomahawk stun that we have. So I hope you stick oh, around and watch that. Tomahawks. Thanks for chatting awesome. with me, bud. And I miss you. And say hi to Lily. Give her a hug for me. Of course. All right, bud. Great, love it. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Cool. All right. Back to steak. My chef team's gone. What am I going to do? I don't know how to cook. All right, let's see here. I think I have a steak somewhere around here, one of these. Do, 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 do. Here's the thing. It's only been like 20 minutes. Well, it's only been like 15 minutes since I put this steak in. And it says it has another 14 minutes to go. But that's why I put this one in. So it's fast, but it's not as fast as I want the show to go. OK? So I've got this steak right here. It's pre-seared. It's exactly like this one. And now we're ready for our post-sear. This is the part, I feel like, again, where there's a lot of opportunity for flavor, a sizzling hot steak, crunchy texture, even if it's a chicken breast or salmon or pork chop or whatever, that a lot of folks get wrong here. And you know, if you're actually cooking something sous vide, it is literally impossible to overcook it. But I have heard people say, I cooked sous vide steak and it was overcooked. You probably overcooked it in the pan, you know, because if you cook it nice and gentle, right now it's 132 degrees in the center and I put it in a 500 degree pan for a long time, it's gonna overcook. So that's that whole, how do I get enough heat on it to get it crunchy and sizzly and sear? Because I also don't want a cold, perfectly cooked steak. I want a sizzly, crunchy, hot one. So again, a lot of energy in the pan. Make sure you get the tiniest tongs possible. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you for the big ones. Oh my <laughs> god, even burger! Yeah, why not do the big ones? Forget it, because I can do it from over here. Thank you, Nick. I love Nick. Give it up for Nick. He's been here 
at Chef Seb since day one. I've been working with Nick since modernist cuisine days and before that. I love him so much. I couldn't do any of this without Nick, honestly. I've actually forgotten how to cook. I just like talk about it now. Okay, same thing. I've got a steak in here. I'm gonna get a little crunchy sear on it. Another thing. What's that? How long are you searing it? That's a great question. How long do you sear it on each side? Uh, I wish I could give an exact answer, but I would say as quickly as possible, because the longer it's in the pan, the more it's overcooking. So, you know, we talked about searing before and after, but honestly, since you guys are all experts, I'm gonna give you like my ultimate, which is this. I do, I do a little sear, it's hanging out. Then I go crazy and I'm like, oh, butter. I put that in. You can even throw like some of the juice stuff, which we have how to make the pan sauce. That's amazing, out of the bag juice. It's actually incredible. Um, you can go to chefsups.com. We got this whole thing on making your own bouillon cubes and all that good stuff. But see, this is seared twice now, which is amazing. But since you guys are pros, we're gonna sear it thrice just because we're all here. So I do this, the butter gets nice and dark. Forget it, we'll put more herbs in just cause, cause we want to. Remember our uh, little net thing? You have to do this. Oh, just for safety. Okay, they can pop and explode. I just don't like a greasy kitchen, even though I like searing meat all the time. Hey, yes? What's your take on the kind of pan that you use? Like the cast iron will hold the heat better, but perhaps carbon steel. Sorry, what's your carbon? question? About the pan you use to sear? Yes. Carbon steel versus cast iron versus. So, okay, what's the great, what's the best pan to sear with? I love that. Here's the thing, um, cast iron's amazing, but it takes forever to preheat. And if you have, especially if you have an induction burner, there we go for camera, whoop. Especially if you have an induction burner, sometimes it's hard to get that much heat into the cast iron pan, because you're kind of, say in this instance, I've got 1800 watts of energy. That's all I have for the whole cast iron pan and my steak. Um, and sometimes, and I use cast iron pans on my grill a lot. So when I want to sear meat and I still want to pan or I want to baste, I'll go outside and use my grill. Um, I like carbon because it has a lot of the properties and benefits of cast iron, but it's usually thinner, you know? Uh, like this is a carbon steel pan. Um, and it's just takes, it's a little thinner basically than a cast iron, so it takes a little hogs, it heats up faster cools down faster, but then you can heat it up again faster. Whereas if I preheat a cast iron pan and lose all the heat, then it takes that much longer to get it back hot again, you know? So pros and cons, if you really have it, like if I had a, uh, a gas burner like outside, one of these like 50,000, I would use cast iron for sure. But if I just have induction or a little less energy, I want a thinner pan that's gonna rob less energy from the whole searing. Um, also you notice, I didn't ever change my pan or anything. I, you know, I sear it in the beginning, wait for an after, and I know at home you might change it or swap it, but I kind of keep the flavor going in the pan. All right, you guys want to try this steak? Oh, yeah. Yeah! Okay, so, bam, ba, da, ba, bam. This is a nice piece of meat. It's a beautiful New York uh, from Snake River Farms. Actually, the tomahawk is from Snake River Farms, and all the meat we have today is from Snake River Farms. We're gonna give you guys, check this out, 10% off because we love Snake River Farms. I don't know if you guys, have you guys ever ordered anything from Snake River Farms? Not ordered by. So they're, they're in Idaho. They grow all the beef in the US. They have some of the original Wagyu strands and you drop ships anywhere in the US. It's amazing. So we've got a 10% off. You can order a tomahawk or you can order Kobe ground beef, whatever you want. It's amazing. So, or New York or ribeye. Let's try the steak though. First, let's see, where's camera Steve here? And usually, I want the perfect shot, so I want to like, ah, uh, this is, um, did turbo work? I don't know, let's see. Oh, dang. It looks just like in the app. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, here. Let's slice some meat, give it a try, and then I want to get into this crazy situation we got outside, and we're going to go outside and eat more meat, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> but we're going to, it's going to be even crazier. So I don't know how you guys do it at home, but this like, this guy too, I like usually squeeze some lemon on it and give it a little dunk. Go for it, guys. 
We're all friends, you know, just grab it with your hands. Mmm! Mmm! Mm. You guys, we're gonna make it. Wow. Oh my god. That's amazing. It's like one of those, I, I know you guys have all been cooking to for a while, but it is also, I sometimes I think, oh, it's so lazy and easy, but it also gives you the opportunity to hone in on technique in other places, because you're not just like stressing about something being done so perfect all the time. You're not trying to like land so many planes on one runway. How do you do it if um, people like different temperatures? Yes, oh my God. So we've been talking about this forever. If you have some folks at your house, they're like, oh my god, this person wants this steak, this steak, this steak. That's a really good piece of content we should uh, put up on Chefs if it's like a chart or a calculator. But what I do, if I've got a few folks who want over, under, one, you can make them all the lowest denominator and do more pan time, which works. Um, you can also start at the highest temperature with sous vide, put that one in, then lower it and put the others in. And that hotter one will stay that doneness. It'll just be warmer, you know, like the other ones. So then you take them out, you mark it. This one's 162 for your friend from, I don't know where they're from, from the Midwest or something, I don't know. Who likes, I don't know. No digging as the Midwest. I don't know who eats overdone meat anymore, but whatever you want, you get to choose your own perfection. Okay, and then the rest are perfect and whatever temperature you want. So you start at the, ho the hottest one and lower the temperature and pop them in. You can actually do like five we've done before. So like 170 degrees, let that cruise for 35 minutes, lower it, make sure it's lowered, throw the other one in, then throw the next one in, and they can all come out totally different temperatures, but they're all the same temperature in the end, different donenesses. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Perfect. That's like, I'm, I wanna get that on the, we gotta get that on chef sets. All right, let's do it. What do we got here? Oh yeah. So for anybody who's just watching, um, all this stuff we're talking about, I know this video goes live on YouTube later, but there's a whole universe at Chef Steps where we have a whole bunch of this stuff. And we've got a sous vide class. You can go to Chef Steps, buy a jewel. I hope you scan the code to win. Okay, so we're gonna transition to this tomahawk situation. And while we're doing that, you guys can check out some of this great content on Chef Steps. Watch it. Inside this bag is just a flavor playground. You put the meat in the bag and you put the boop bag in the bath. We're gonna cook it sous vide, perfectly cooked every time. One of the things I love about sous vide, so I can just leave it in for a couple of PRs, it'll be there ready waiting for me. Perfect. And you only have to fry for a couple few minutes, it's gonna make a lot less mess and it's gonna be perfect every time. and it just gets more juicy and more tender and more savory. Yeah, I'm gonna show you right now. Come to my flavor playground later. <laughs> <sighs> Look how fast I clean this. Ting! All right, so it's tomahawk time. So check this out. Um, Meat's expensive, and it's always going to get more expensive. And I don't want to live in a world in the future where meat's getting cheaper. That seems suspicious to me. So I've got the ultimate cut here. I think it's tomahawk. One, because it has my favorite muscle groups in it. It's got the deco, it's got the longest Miss Dorsey. It's a ribeye with a giant rib bone, which is delicious, and it's very showy. They're expensive, though. So if you're going to have the ultimate steak, you want to cook it the ultimate method, and you also want to sear it the ultimate technique as well, which we're gonna do all those right now. Check it out. So, I've got, do, 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 do. Did you know Jewel can cook a ton of water? We've cooked whole pigs with one Jewel before. So, this is a yoga mat. So I've got a cooler over here with a Jewel in it. And coolers are actually better than any pot to use for sous vide because they're insulated. So they're not losing any heat energy. Same great thing that makes them keep things cold, helps them keep things hot too. So I've got, let's see, which one looks better? I've got two here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh my gosh, thank you Snake River Farms for this epic meat. So that's, it's hard to tell the scale because you put it in a giant Ziploc and it looks like it could just be a regular steak in a regular Ziploc. But this is a giant 
two and a half gallon Ziploc. Uh, for everybody who's watching, this is another thing that Nick and team are just doing. When you're sous vide meats with bones and sharp bones, check out this cute thing Nick did. Little parchment paper, wrapped it with little twine, but um, so it doesn't poke your bag. I love that. So we've got our tomahawk. It's perfectly cooked because it's been cooking sous vide for, I don't know, probably like two hours now. And we're gonna sear it. And here's the setup, okay? It's perfectly cooked. If I just put it on a pan, this is such a big piece of meat, it's gonna take a lot of energy to sear it, okay? Um, so what really works amazing is a deep fryer. So we've got a vat of oil out there, like 400 degrees on a burner, like you're frying a turkey, except we're frying a steak. But I don't wanna just throw it in the oil because it might overcook it. So you know what you do first? Dunk it in liquid nitrogen. Are we ready to do it? That liquid nitrogen will preserve the temperature barrier. Just like if you go to like cryotherapy and you get like the top millimeter on your skin chilled, then you go hot, then you go cold. That's what we're doing to the steak. It's the ultimate way to sear the ultimate steak. Let's do it. Oh my God. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my God. Look at this, you guys. Do you guys know what you're about to see? A cool trick. A cool trick. Yes, you're going to see a cool trick, and you're going to see a hot trick. And this is basically, I've got a tomahawk here. Have you guys ever had a tomahawk steak? It's like the ultimate steak. Comes from an extinct dinosaur. <laughs> so this is from Snake River Farms. It's like a $300 piece of meat, and I cooked it sous vide. And I don't know if you guys know what sous vide is, but if you scan the code, you can win one, and you can learn how to use it. It's amazing. But this is cooked to perfection, even though it looks a little ugly and weird right now. It's perfectly done, but I need it crusty and delicious. Have you guys ever cryo fried? No. Have you heard of it? Yeah. So we were doing it back at Modernist Cuisine, and I can't remember before, all sorts of different things when we'd want like the deepest, darkest, crunchiest crust. And we actually haven't made much content about it, but you've seen it pop up in some videos at Chef's Ups in the past, but I just want to do a focus point on this. I'm calling it a stunt, but it's actually really practical if you have liquid nitrogen and giant fryer and expensive steak. Yeah. It's actually the best way to sear it. So here's what happens. Uh, I've got a I got my spider here. So if I just throw it in the fryer, this steak's actually already hot, so, and it's cooked and ready to eat. If I just throw it in the fire, it's likely to overcook. So I'm going to chill it first. Anybody know how cold liquid nitrogen is? Negative 320. Negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit. That's freaking cold. And my oil's 430 Fahrenheit. That's like 780 degree difference between the two environments. So right here, what I'm doing is, no, I don't want to freeze the whole thing. I just want to chill the outside. And then it goes in the fryer. Oh my god. Woo! We turned it off, right? We did. Okay, so this is another thing that people don't do enough of when they fry turkeys or fry whatever. You heat up the oil, then you turn off the fire. Don't leave it on. We need some like, oh, we got salt and pepper. We do, yeah. I feel like we're gonna need something more epic to put on it. Let's see what we can dig up. So check this out, it's getting crusty. If you're like, ooh, I might overcook it, you could dunk it in liquid nitrogen again because I want an extra crust. Can we do a double sear? Just a little more. I don't want to make it cold. I just want to make the outside chilled, take a little bit of that heat transfer off, and then back in one more time. And you want long arms for this. <laughs> and a lot of people to feed. This is where I need the other tomahawk, because if we have anyone in the crowd who thinks they can eat a whole tomahawk in 30 minutes, I'll give you lifetime access to Chef's Ups. Get a whole Uncle Buck situation going here. Check that out. And then you also get this, like, the fat is getting nice and pork rindy. It's insane. You can't do that in a pan. And also, you know, if I'm going to do an ultimate steak and get a tomahawk, I probably did it because it's a little showy. I want to show you a way to cook it and sear it. That's it. Look at that.
How's that look, Steve? Sizzly frizzly. Oh my god. Ooh. I'm gonna go right on our little butcher counter because we're gonna slice this thing. That's cryo frying. If I just throw it in the fryer, it's gonna really overcook. And you know, if you've paid this much for a tomahawk, I don't want that. And believe it or not, liquid nitrogen you can get anywhere, like any welding supply or gas supply store, and it's really, really cheap. You just shove with a thermos, they fill it for you, and that's it. Let's see here. Let's see what Nick comes out with. You guys wanna try some of this? Oh my God, so good. Do, 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 do. So there's lots of ways to cut a steak. There's a bunch of muscles in a tomahawk, but since we're here, I'll just give you like a little tomahawk butchery demo. You've got your fancy rib. I like chewing on that, and then I give it to camp, my dog. I've got, this is called the tail, and there's a really nice big hunk of meat in here. So it's this guy's amazing. This big piece of fat, you can keep that for all sorts of stuff or just eat it, smear it on some biscuits or something. <whistles> then, do 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 do. This is my favorite piece of meat that exists on any mammal and people. It's called the deckle or ribeye cap. If you're ever at a really nice uh, butcher shop or steakhouse, you can get it as a ribeye cap or deckle. And then this, which is essentially the same cut as a New York, it's the loin that runs through the New York and the ribeye. Oh. This is like, got like a lot of folks to feed here. I'm gonna have to do the thing where I slice everything in half forever. We have another one too, by the way. I think we're gonna want the other tomahawk, Nick. All right, this is a miso compound butter. What? Did you just make that? Yeah. Crazy what chefs can do. All right, so I've got some loin here. I've got, this is my favorite piece right here. I just go nuts for this. And again, if you guys are watching or scanning on the video, there's a whole discount for Chef's Apps to win a jewel and Snake River Farms, which is this cut of meat. It's all Wagyu grown and uh, raised in Idaho. It's amazing, amazing stuff. This is hot. Oh my gosh! Woo! Hot, 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 hot. Okay. All right, I've got my best friend from Studio Pass here. You guys, we've got some like little skewers. I'll just do like a butterboard. <laughs> you can grab a skewer, give it a try. You guys want some? Right, yeah. Jump in. I'm gonna steal one of my favorites. These aren't sharper. These are really, I don't know. Maybe they work, we can make it work. <gasps> They're not very sharp, huh? Okay. We'll get some better ones. No, just some toothpaste. Holy smoke! Mm. Oh my god. That's the ultimate steak. Seared ultimate, it's ultimate technique. I love it. Holy smokes. All right, guys. I think you guys are gonna want some, right? We gotta share with friends, huh? What do you think? What piece did you go for? I wasn't watching. Yeah! I know, I can't believe Nick made that like compound butter in like 11 seconds. Guy needs to be on Top Chef. He needs to come to your house? Ah, uh, it's pretty expensive. I'm gonna try to get some sharper toothpicks or skewers. These things are like all dull. Thank you. Who makes dull toothpicks? What's the point? Okay. All right. Here, let's do one of these. Do you guys want another chunk? Yes. Yes. Don't worry, we're making more right now. I know, I cut them huge because I didn't want to stand there forever. You guys can actually just pass this around too. Yeah. And we're making more, don't worry. We're making more. I've got some more right here, actually, that I can see up. Hey, Kyle, could you grab one or two more plates, too, because we're going to have this one? Thank you, sir. Is that like the butteriest piece of meat, you guys? 
You guys, that's Chef Steps Live. We've got the next one on. Somebody give me a date. What is it? What? June 24th. There's another one here. It'll be live at Chef Steps and on YouTube. Thank you for coming. I hope you guys loved it and learned something along the way. And don't forget, you can still scan this and win a Jewel Turbo. It's our new product. It's amazing. It's what made this steak so great. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Isn't that so good?